The most meaningful part of the regression equation is the slope of the regression line. So when we take a sample to calculate the slope of a regression line, we're often interested in what might the slope be of the regression line for the entire population. So let's look at how we can make a confidence interval for the slope of that regression line. The first thing we need to do is find what we're going to call the sum of squared deviations. The sum of squares. And the sum of squares, there's three sum of squares formulas that we're going to need to find. The first one is the sum of squares for the x's, which is found as the sum of the x squareds. And then we subtract the sum of the x's squared divided by the sample size. The second piece we need to find is the sum of squares in the y direction, which is almost identical but with y's. It's the sum of the y squareds minus the sum of the y's squared divided by the sample size. And the third piece is the sum of squares of the xy pairs. And that's going to be the sum of the xy's minus the sum of the x's times the sum of the y's divided by the sample size. The first thing we have to do is find those three sum of squares pieces, because we're going to use those in order to find the next two pieces. The second piece that we need to find is we need to find the critical value, the t sub alpha over 2, and the standard error. So the critical value, t sub alpha over 2, is going to come directly from Excel. We're going to do a t dot inverse dot two-tailed test where we list alpha and the degrees of freedom. Again, alpha is the area in the tails, just like other confidence intervals. And then df, like we've seen before from other t-tests, df is the degrees of freedom, which because we've got bivariate data, it's actually going to be the sample size minus 2, 2 less than the sample size. which is a little different than what we've seen in the past, where it was just one less than the sample size. The other thing we need to find for our confidence interval, then, is the standard error. And the standard error is going to be the square root of the sum of squares in the y direction minus the slope of the regression line, the slope estimate from the sample, times the standard error in the xy direction all divided by n minus 2. Once we have those two pieces, then, that's when we're going to be able to find, draw a line here separating these, that's where we're able to find the error, or how wide we cast the net around the point estimate, and the confidence interval. Where's the net going to cover? So the error is going to equal to that critical value, t sub alpha over 2, times the standard error divided by the square root of the sum of squares in the x direction. And then b, the confidence interval, once we have that error calculated, is the slope we found from our sample minus the error, comma, the slope we found from our sample plus the error. And that will be our final confidence interval. Once we have our confidence interval, we always want to be able to interpret it. Interpreting the confidence interval always follows a very similar pattern. But this time, for bivariate data, the way we're going to adjust it is say we are blank percent confident. Maybe we're at a 95% confidence interval or whatever that the y variable is changing at a rate between the low number and the top number from our confidence interval. 
change in the rate of between this number and that number per x that we get, again, in context. So there's a lot of pieces and steps to get to this confidence interval. Excel is going to do the ugly calculations for us, and then we're going to use these formulas to find the actual confidence intervals.